Hi guys, it's Christy, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint an Afghani tribes person. I've got this model here from Artisan Games. It's part of their second Afghan war range. But what I really like here is that this figure is really, really generic. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the dress uh, in a lot of parts of Afghanistan did not change drastically for a pretty long time. So you could easily use a model like this for much earlier and also much later time periods. Though, of course, if you're going for a modern Afghani, this probably isn't going to work for you. Though there are actually some elements of the dress that here that you still see today, like this sort of headscarf, head wrap. You still see a lot of guys uh, in Afghanistan wearing those. And I imagine things like the pants and the jacket may still be worn as well for certain occasions or in certain regions of the country, though I'm far from an expert on local traditions. So, you know, you'll have to figure that out yourself. But generally speaking, this I think this is a really good Molly purpose figure that a lot of people should be able to get some use out of for a lot of different projects. Uh, one more quick note before I start. I have actually painted another model from the Second African War. I did an Indian um, guide uh, figure who worked for the Brits. So that's good if you want to see how to do a more sort of standard British uniform from the period. Uh, and you'll also probably want to see that tutorial um, because I go over how to paint a sort of a darker skin tone that would be nice on a figure like this. And I'm not going to be covering that in this video today. So check that out if you're interested. I will leave a link uh, below in the description box. So as usual, I'm starting off here with all the paints you're going to need to complete this model. The majority are Vallejo, but you'll notice that I've got a Citadel black wash in there and also some metallic gold paint uh, by Army Painter because I like their nice, warm, uh, rich gold shade. I decided to start out by painting his tunic or jacket or whatever you want to call it. I really wanted to go for a really nice dark, rich, black, red color here, which is not a color I've really done before, I think, on any model. Uh, but I'm using a base coat here of good old German camouflage black brown from Vallejo. My first highlight on the tunic then is going to be about a 50-50 mix of the German camouflage black brown and my other favorite standby color, uh, black, red. And for my next highlight, I've now moved on up to just uh, pure black, red, and I'm going to apply a couple layers of this to build up a little bit of extra intensity. I'm going to continue then highlighting the tunic by taking some Vallejo red leather and sort of mixing increasing amounts of that into uh, my black red just to sort of build up my higher highlights and you can see I'm starting really to focus in on uh, sharper folds and creases and areas where I really expect a lot of light to hit. Uh, nonetheless, I'm taking this real slow. I'm not mixing in too much of the red leather too quickly so that you get kind of a nice, subtle, understated effect. Um, I did end up using a sort of a final sort of high highlight of just pure red leather, but uh, I was really sparing with where I applied that and I tried to keep my paint really, really thin by the time I got to that point. Now for his breeches. Now I wanted these to have sort of a neutral color to them, but I also wanted them to have some warmth that would kind of go together well with his jacket. I'm using a base coat here of German uh, field gray World War II uh, from Vallejo. And my highlighting formula on these is really pretty simple. I'm just going to be taking some Vallejo sky gray and just kind of adding increasing amounts of that into my field gray uh, World War II and just kind of building it up. Again, I really liked getting sort of a rather subtle look on this entire model. So I made sure that my sort of progressive highlight layers were pretty subtle, uh, not so I'm not adding too much of the gray in too quickly. Um, and obviously I don't want this to get too gray or too light, so I'm not gonna go all the way up uh, to pure sky gray by itself, just kind of as much as I kind of feel like. I just want to 
be sure that I kind of still maintain that kind of warm uh, bass tone that I started with the uh, German Field Grey World War II. Uh, if you feel like uh, after you've kind of finished highlighting that there's not quite enough contrast between the highlights and the really deep shadows and creases, you can go back in and maybe add a little emphasis on the those areas, which is what I did. And the way I did that was I just took some glaze medium and mixed it into some German uh, or some some German camouflage black brown and uh, sort of lightly went over or lightly put that down into the really deep creases with a small brush and just kind of built that up uh, and that kind of helped in areas where I felt like there just needed to be a little bit extra shadow and a little extra relief. Now for his uh, leg wrappings or improvised putties, I guess. I'm base coating these using uh, Vallejo khaki. As far as highlighting the leg wrappings go, uh, you haven't got a lot of area to work with, so you don't have to worry about blending, but you do need a nice small brush so you can be uh, careful and precise. And all I'm doing here is just taking some um, Vallejo Ivory and mixing it into my khaki sort of again in increasing quantities and just kind of carefully applying it along the, uh, the sort of top areas of those uh, strips of fabric and just kind of building it up lighter and lighter and lighter until I get all the way up to just pure ivory which I'm going to then not necessarily apply everywhere like for example I'm going to be putting it sort of on the fronts of the legs and the cat and the backs of the calves where I know a lot of light is hitting but not really putting the brightest highlights for example on the inside of the legs and again when you're done with this if you find like there's not enough contrast you can go back in with a German camouflage black brown glaze and kind of carefully run that down in the creases just to uh, further emphasize the strips of fabric a little bit more. Next, I'm gonna be killing two birds with one stone by uh, base coating his shoes, which I want to be leather, and also his sort of fur trim on his tunic uh, using uh, German camouflage black brown. And even though I know I'm starting out with the same color here, the highlights I'm gonna use are gonna be different enough that they are not going to look similar on the completed model. Next, I'm gonna grab some leather brown um, and I'm going to mix that 50-50 uh, with my German camouflage black brown to do a base highlight on the shoes because I want a nice subtle leather shade. And then I'm going to take the pure leather brown and I'm going to use that uh, to put a sort of first highlight on the fur trim. Uh, what I'm really doing here is trying to hit this top surface of the, of the uh, fur and not really get too much down in the crevices, obviously. And I'm gonna apply that same color as well on the shoes. And then I'm gonna continue uh, highlighting the shoes further uh, by taking some beige brown and carefully mixing that into the leather brown uh, and sort of just slowly and carefully uh, building that up, uh, sort of making sure the areas like the heels and the toe, for example, get lighter and lighter and progressively lighter uh, up to the point that I get uh, just a hint of pure beige brown on those toes and some of the really bright areas where you, you really want the leather to really look light and a little bit weathered. Now as far as that fur trim grows, even though I started painting it with the same two colors as the shoes, I'm going to continue highlighting it in a way that makes it look different. What I've done here is got some Vallejo Sky Gray and I'm mixing that into my uh, leather brown and sort of uh, applying that sort of lightly and carefully onto the surface detail of that fur trim and sort of building it up. I, I really like this look for to kind of adding fur effects to your model, sort of starting out with a brown base and then creating sort of a gray uh, brown color that you can add highlighting because I, I think you see actually a lot of furs in nature where you have sort of this darker base and then the sort of the tips of the fur tend to get this sort of grayish brown cast uh, so I really like how that looks and I'm just going to be building up uh, sort of several progressive highlights in this way adding in more and more of the gray paint. 
Next, I'm just really quickly base coat his beard here using some Vallejo German Gray. Now as far as his sort of shirt goes, I wanted to have a tone that's kind of complementary to the pants, but slightly different too. So I'm using a base here of Vallejo Neutral Gray, but I mixed just a little bit of the um, German Field Gray World War II in here, just to warm it up slightly and also sort of make it sort of blend together a little bit more with the rest of the models. Look, uh, as far as highlighting goes here, I'm just gonna be taking some uh, Vallejo Sky Gray and just sort of gradually uh, mixing uh, that into the tone here and sort of increasingly lightening the area. Uh, the main difference here between uh, the pans is that I'm starting out with a slightly different base tonally and I'm going to go much higher with the highlights. So I'm going to go all the way up to almost pure uh, sky gray in some areas like around the edges of his sleeves and on some of the really sharp wrinkles and folds. So the overall look is going to be a lot paler, a lot, it's a lot more gray um, and just it's just generally different than what we got on the pants. But at the same time it's really going to kind of complement that. Now I'm gonna work on doing a little bit more with his beard. I want this to be not really true black or gray. I want it to have a bit of a brown tone to it. So I'm first taking some German camouflage black brown and sort of applying it at the tips and blending it upward so that it's basically darker or more black towards the roots and more brown at the base. After that, I'm gonna go over it with a layer of leather brown. And finally, I'm taking that mixture of leather brown and kind of sky gray that I was using earlier on the fur trim and I'm applying it in the same way, always applying the highlights around towards the base of the beard uh, so that the hair looks lighter out there and then it's more dark uh, towards the top. I finish them by taking a wash of Citadel Nolan oil and applying it to the whole thing just to add more contrast and get down uh, better in the recesses. And if you want when that's dry, you can go back over with one more sort of light brown highlight layer at the base just to bring out a little bit more of that color that you might have lost from the wash. For his sash, I decided to introduce a blue tone. Uh, the rest of the outfit is really a combination of kind of warm, neutral colors. So I really just wanted something that really was a focal point that would really stand out against the rest. I'm applying a base coat here of Vallejo Oxford Blue. And then I'm going to just take some Vallejo Dark Blue Gray and use that to kind of lighten the uh, Oxford blue and apply some layers of that. And I'll just highlight all the way up to uh, pure uh, dark blue gray. Uh, if you want to make it pop even more, you can add a little bit of sky gray in there and create an even uh, lighter tone to continue highlighting. But if you do that, make sure you you kind of limit that to some really specific key areas. And of course, with this, make sure you're using a number one brush because otherwise you're gonna have a hard time getting these really fine details and folds in the sash. Now for his head wrap. Um, I'm applying a base coat here of Vallejo German Gray to the entire area. Next, I added progressive highlights to uh, the head wrap just by taking neutral gray and adding uh, more and more of it into my German gray to produce brighter and brighter shades. It's pretty easy to figure out where you can paint because the sculpting is nice and clear and you can see where there's just very, you know, uh, definite wraps and sort of pieces of fabric going on and you just want to kind of apply your lighter highlight colors towards the tops of those. Uh, one thing that's fun about uh, these sort of, uh, or at least in Af Afghanistan it seems, when, when you see guys wearing these head wraps, they tend to use all different colors of fabric and even fabric with patterns sometimes, which is really makes them much more interesting to paint. It also allows you to introduce a whole bunch of variation if you're painting a bigger unit of these guys. So as I just said, since patterns are a thing sometimes uh, on uh, headwear in this region, I couldn't resist adding some. 
I just took some of the Lattice Guide Gray here and got it really nice and thin and I started just painting some lines and designs uh, onto the uh, surface. You can do a variety of different things here and I had a lot of fun just kind of playing around and the nice thing is because the thing, the, all the fabric is really wrapped around into this fairly complex knot, you don't necessarily have to worry about uh, things being completely cohesive or worried about like where the pattern starts and where it ends. It's not going to really matter all that much if it's super logical, especially at uh, this scale. So I just went crazy and just had fun uh, applying various lines and details uh, sort of to my heart's content here. Once I'd roughed in where the pattern was going to be, I then went back in with some thin down Vallejo uh, white uh, and used that to add further sort of texture and definition to the pattern. And also, of course, I applied that white sort of on areas where the folds in the scarf were really sort of bulging out. So it looked like there were sort of some highlight effects going on. And I went back over some of the areas multiple times just to build it up stronger. And just generally introducing this white shade in here made the whole pattern look a little bit more rich and varied. We're almost done now and all, all that's really left here is to paint the sword. I'm keeping that pretty simple. Um, the hilt and guard and all that, I decided to just do in kind of a gold brass metal. So I just quickly made a base coat mixing the German camouflage black brown with some of that army painter greedy gold. And then after I applied the base coat, I went back in with just pure greedy gold and highlighted it some. I didn't think it was really worth messing with it a lot more than that because there's not a lot of it showing and I didn't want it to be that bright and shiny. Now, as for the blade of the sword itself, I took some of the German gray and I took some Vallejo Air uh, steel and made a pretty dark gray, uh, black metallic base coat for my sword. Uh, and then to highlight, I just started kind of adding more and more of the Vallejo Air steel into there, sort of gradually uh, brightening it up. I tend to, when I'm doing this, try to put the lighter, uh, more metallic light steel colors towards the top and make it sure it's a little bit more bot uh, dark towards the base and also that sort of the inner side of the sword blade towards its head. You want that to be dark because it's in shadow. Uh, I finished up with just some pure uh, Vallejo Air Steel which I applied really lightly as you'd expect kind of along the edge of the blade or, which is where you'd expect the, the sword to be the sharpest because you know that's where you're cutting ed edges and therefore also the shiniest and most reflective. So here is the finished sort of Afghani uh, tribes person from the period around the second Afghan war. This model was a lot of fun for me because it gave me an opportunity to experiment with some colors and some color combinations that I hadn't really tried before, which made it interesting uh, and really uh, novel. And I actually found that I learned a lot because uh, I've always kind of wanted to try making a really deep black red color uh, like I did on the tunic here. Uh, and so it was nice for me to sort of really figure out exactly how I could best do that. And then once I'd come up with that, and that was kind of my sort of anchor piece for the whole model, I kind of had an interesting time working out uh, shades for the other parts of the outfit that would complement that and work nicely together with it. Uh, but, you know, still, you know, add a good variety to the whole uh, look and and it, in the whole model, I think the whole outfit is much is pretty dark for me. I tend not to go for such an overall dark palette on my models, but I, I really just like the finished effect. I think it's really nice. And as I said at the beginning of the video, this model should be pretty general purpose. You could use uh, elements here for uh, similar figures uh, from a lot of uh, different time periods. So yeah, you know. Even if the second Afghan war is not your thing, it's certainly not my thing. Uh, I think I, or at least I hope this will be helpful to you. So as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, uh, share it, leave comments, of course, with uh, what you thought, or if you have questions or whatever. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well if you haven't gotten a chance to do so already. That way you can keep up with all my latest uh, painting updates. So that's all for now, and I will see you next time.